Hey everybody, Mr. White here. We are going to start into circuits by talking about electric current. Now before we get into this video, I would highly recommend watching What is Electric Current by SparkFun Electronics. I will throw the link for their video into the description of this video on YouTube. Now there are many things that we use every day, things like our phones, light bulbs, heaters, power lines, television, refrigerators, uh, the device that you're watching this video on, um, there's all sorts of different things and there's a common factor with all of those and that is energy. When it comes down to it, all of those things need energy. Um, stored chemical energy in batteries, there's light and acoustic energy from your television, uh, there's light energy from light bulbs, thermal energy from the heater, but where does all this energy come from? And the answer that we usually go to is electricity. Now, when we talk electricity, we're usually referring to current, electric current. And current is just the movement of charge. Charge is what transfers energy to all of our things that require energy. Now, so far, we've been talking about static electricity. And static, meaning usually meaning not moving, is not quite accurate because we can still have the movement of charge between objects. We refer to this as electrostatic discharge, and this is really quick. Uh, common examples, lightning, for example. Uh, the Van de Graaff generator that we see in class that can throw sparks through the air, which is an insulator. A lot of times we'll see electrostatic discharge through insulators, air being one of them. Um, and so when we're talking about electric current, though, that's referring to more steady, uh, continuous flow of charge uh, than just this rapid discharge uh, of charge from one object to another. Um, you need a continuous voltage source for that, and that's something we'll talk about later, so don't worry about that yet. Uh, and this is generally through a conductor, so something that allows the flow of electrons you know, quite easily, something like a metal, like copper. That's a really common one. Um, and so this is what we're usually talking about when we say electricity. So what exactly is electric current? And the definition of current is how much charge is delivered each second. Uh, we measure this in coulombs per second because we're looking at how many coulombs of charge pass a particular point in a wire or a circuit every second. Um, so a coulomb is equivalent to the charge carried by 6.2415 times 10 to the 18th electrons. That is a lot of electrons. And the amount of charge that that many electrons carry is equal to one coulomb of charge. So every time that amount of charge passes a point in a wire each second, we say that we have one coulomb per second or one ampere of current. Uh, we can shorten that by saying one amp. So if you've ever heard amps, uh, one amp of current would be one coulomb per second. So if 6.2415 times 10 to the 18th electrons were to pass a point every second, we would say that we have one ampere of current passing through that circuit. Uh, in mathematical formulas, we use the letter I to represent current. Uh, we use Q to represent charge, of course, and then T to represent time. In order to have current, we need a complete circuit. A circuit is a conducting path that allows charges to flow. Now, if you have an open circuit, which means it's not a complete path, somewhere there's a gap, uh, the path, again, is not complete, and charges can't flow through this, so you're not going to get current. If the circuit is closed, however, that is a complete path, charges can flow, and that's how you get the movement of electrons. So a complete circuit requires a conducting path, it requires a voltage source, which we'll talk about later, and it requires a resistor, which we'll talk about later as well. Now, in terms of energy, every electron is going to deliver a certain amount of kinetic energy to atoms in the circuit. The electrons are flowing through the circuit, they are going to, uh, you know, bounce into uh, atoms and other things, and they're delivering energy through those interactions. That energy gets transformed into other types of energy, like thermal energy, light energy, sound energy, uh, other types of energy that we experience when using our different devices and different uh, you know, machines. Now, current tells us how many coulombs or groups of electrons deliver energy each second. But where does that energy come from and how much energy is there? That's something that we are going to talk about later, and it depends. So for now, just know that current is how many groups of electrons that are delivering energy every second. 
Now, what direction does current flow? Does it flow from positive to negative or negative to positive? Does current refer to the motion of negative charge or positive charge? And you might be a little surprised that it's actually both. Uh, current is referring to the movement of any charge per second. And so when we're talking negative charges, negative charges flow from negative to positive. But when we're talking positive charges, those flow from positive to negative. Now, you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 Mr. White, you just spent the entire last unit telling us that positive charges don't flow. Yeah, let's talk a little history. So Ben Franklin started his study of electricity by tribocharging objects, charging by friction, and flying kites in storms, which I do not recommend at all. Uh, and so he assigned the terms positive and negative to this uh, apparent electric fluid that he thought existed. And so positive meant you had some extra of this fluid. Negative meant that you had a little bit less of this fluid. And when batteries were discovered, uh, current was still believed to flow from positive to negative, from more to less. Um, and many people actually still think this way. When you look at a battery, if you see plus and minus, you might even think that the charge is flowing from plus to minus. Uh, that's actually not the case. It was discovered that electrons were the actual charge carriers, and those were the particles that were doing the moving through wires, um, and they were moving in the opposite direction of the direction that positive charge was believed to flow in. Problem is, we were doing this for so long, it became the rule of thumb or the convention. So when we talk about positive charge movement, we are talking about conventional current. It became the convention. We stuck with it still used to this day with rules and physics and other sciences. Um, so when we're talking about conventional current, we're talking about the movement of positive charge. If we're talking about actual current, we're talking about the movement of negative charge. And so is current positive or negative? It depends. If you're talking conventional, then you're talking positive to negative. Um, we can actually track the holes left um, and for a very short time when electrons move, which I'll show you in just a second, or we can track the actual electron motion uh, themselves. Check this out. In this demo, the cups are atoms and the colored balls represent electrons. Now once I hook up a battery, electrons are going to start to move. Watch what happens when each electron moves clockwise one atom. When the electron leaves the atom, it temporarily leaves a gap or hole, and that atom is slightly more positive. Now, watch that hole as each electron moves. The electrons are moving clockwise, but the hole moves counterclockwise, and in this case, that's the direction that a positive charge would flow. So just to be clear, it's not actual positive charges that are flowing, it's just where there's holes left by electrons that have jumped to a different atom, leaving the atom slightly more positive. So we're really tracking the electron holes which, again, are slightly more positive atoms at that point. For our purposes, we're going to continue to use electron flow, uh, so negative charge movements, as current. So when we refer to current in this class, we're referring to the movement of electrons. Now, when electrons are moving around from atom to atom through a wire, they move pretty quick. They can move on the order of uh, 10 to the 6 meters per second, so somewhere in the millions of meters per second. Uh, and that's really fast, but they move really erratically. So they're not just moving through the circuit in a straight line at this high velocity. They're bouncing around the conductor. So how is it that they get through a wire or a circuit? Um, electrons overall will move from negative to positive um, against the electric field. Remember, an electric field is drawn as if the charge is moving were positive. Um, the drift velocity of electrons is really rather slow, so they're bouncing around and all over the place, but overall their motion is through the circuit, and this actual drift, you know, as they're doing this, you know, eventually they're making it over here, that drift speed is actually really low. It's somewhere on the order of 10 to the negative 4 meters per second, um, which is a pretty small number. But a lot of electrons still do pass. One amp of current means that 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons have passed a particular point in a wire, in a circuit, uh, every second. So uh, there are still quite a few electrons that can pass through uh, a circuit, even though this drift velocity is rather slow. Now, is electricity slow? And the answer is absolutely not. Like when you flip a switch, you pretty much instantly see light turn on. 
Uh, forces on charges happen very quickly. As soon as you flip that switch, an electric field uh, is in that wire, in that circuit, acting on all of the charge in that circuit. Um, and so those actions happen very quickly. Uh, in the example GIF at the bottom of the screen, you see that a marble is being added to one end of the tube and almost instantly another marble is being forced out the other end of the tube. So even though the initial marble didn't really move very far, it has a pretty instant effect on the marbles in front of it and at the other end of the tube. And, uh, you know, this is just an analogy, but in a way, this is how an electric field acts on all of the electrons in a uh, circuit at one time. It happens really quickly, um, even if the electrons themselves are not really moving very far. Um, they're already still there in the circuit. And so when you flip on the switch, you're not just flooding the circuit with electrons out of nowhere. They were actually already there. Um, they're just now being acted on by a field that's causing them to move uh, once you flip that switch on. So the electrons that are going to charge your phone later are actually already there in your house, already in the wire. They just need some kind of field to motivate them to start moving. So coming up at this point, we're going to see later on in another video what causes current and we're also going to see what gets in the way of current. Hopefully this helped. If you have any additional questions, please ask. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.